Alright, so now that we discussed the basics of deriving finite differences, approximations to different to derivatives, we're going to talk about the, the easiest and the oldest method of using finite differences to solve differential equations. And it is called Euler's method because it is essentially named after Euler. So the idea is we're going to get a first order differential equation and we're going to express it in terms of its first derivative. So we're going to grab anything that is not the first derivative and put it on the other side and then we're going to call that a function of x and y. And then obviously the one piece of information that will allow us to find a numerical solution is the initial condition. So we need one initial value in order to solve for all the next consecutive values. So the way it works is like this. You're going to grab an equation. Let's say you have the equation dn over dt plus kn equals to zero. Now what you're going to do is you want to express everything in terms of the first derivative. So now you're going to have, if you rearrange this, you're going to have dn over dt equals to minus k times n, and k is just a constant. And now this thing right here is going to be a function of two variables. It's going to be a function of t and a function of n. It is a function of t because n in itself is a function of time. So it is implied that this is both a function of time and n. Sometimes you can actually have an expression that has t involved in it. So to give you an example of that, let's say we have something like t squared dn dt plus k times t times n equals to 3. Then if we wanted to solve this in an expression in this form, which is why we need to apply Euler's method, then all we would need to do is have the following. We would have dn over dt. So divide both sides by t squared and then subtract this from the other side. So we're going to have 3 over t squared minus k over t times n. So this is going to be our differential equation in the form that we need. And now this is going to be the function of both t and n. So that's the whole idea behind uh, solving this. So why do we need to put equations in this form? Well, the idea is that we're going to substitute this by some finite order or finite difference approximation. And in general, for the Euler method, what we use is the forward um, approximation. So remember, the forward approximation looks like this. We have y at x plus delta x minus y at x over delta x. And we know that the truncation error of this is in the orders of magnitude of delta x. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug this in here and then solve for the value that is next in the sequence, which is x plus delta x. So in this case, our x is going to be t. So let's solve this one here first. Let's solve dn over dt equals to minus k times n. This is going to become n t plus delta t minus n of t over delta t is going to be equal to minus k times n of t. And now all we need to do is we need to rearrange this so to solve for the next value. So we're going to get n t plus delta t is going to be equal to nt minus k delta t times nt. And for convenience, we drop this kind of notation and we just use a subscript notation that looks like this. So basically, we're going to be referring to values in a vector of values. So we're going to have ni minus k delta t ni. So this is the finite difference equation that we're going to use to solve in the computer. So we're going to put all these values, we're going to give it an initial value n0, and that will allow us to calculate the next values in the sequence, n1, n2, and so on. Now we can do the same thing for this equation right here. So let's grab that equation. We have dn over dt. So this is one example. This is another example. 3 over t squared minus k over t n. So this is going to become ni plus 1 minus ni 
over delta t equals to 3 over ti squared. Remember that everything needs a subscript because we're going to be addressing values of a vector. So minus k over ti and i. And then if we solve for this, our final difference equation is going to become the following. We're going to have ni plus 3 delta t over ti minus k delta t over ti. I'm sorry, this should be squared here. And i. So that's our final difference equation. So what you can do is k and delta t, those are two parameters that you choose. And i, well, the first value is going to be a naught. This is something that you need to give the program. So basically, that's it because t, the values of time are simply going to be t naught, t1. And you know that T1 is just going to be T0 plus delta T. Then T2 is going to be T1 plus delta T and so on. So that's something that you can calculate beforehand. And then in the end, this is just going to give, give you all the values of the solution for this consecutive kind of thing. And we can see that it's very easy to implement on a computer. In the next video, we're actually going to use Octave to find the solution to this first equation that we found here and we're, we're going to compare it to our uh, exact solution because for that equation we can actually find the exact solution and then we're going to compare it to the numerical one and see what the effect of the step size has on the accuracy of the solution. But this is the main idea behind the Euler method. We're essentially taking a first order differential equation we're putting it into this form and then we're simply replacing the derivative by some finite difference approximation and then solving for the next value in line which is t plus delta t and then once we have the finite difference equation we can put that into a computer put it into a loop and then we can calculate all the next values in the sequence based on the initial value